heads up for students, faculty, staff, and neighbors of Algoma University. The university's Megan Parlow notified on TV last night that the school will be conducting a full alarm system check at 10 o'clock this morning. Parlow wants to reassure people in the school and surrounding neighborhoods that this will only be a test. Anishinaabek Nation leadership is supportive of the disbandment of the Thunder Bay Police Service Board and see this as an opportunity for the Thunder Bay Police Service and the future Thunder Bay Police Service Board to cultivate a strong, positive and effective long-term relationship with surrounding Indigenous communities. The Thunder Bay Police Service Board was disbanded by the Ontario Civilian Police Commission following the findings in a highly critical report prepared by Senator Murray Sinclair. The report is based on an investigation conducted in response to concerns raised by First Nations leaders of oversights by police services following a series of deaths and race-based violence against Indigenous peoples in Thunder Bay. In a news release, Anishinaabek Nation Grand Council Chief Glenn Hare said that his hope is that with a clean slate, the new board members will bring with them new perspectives open minds and expertise to the table that will allow for open, honest conversations that will hopefully pave the way to get ahead of crises that affect their communities like the opioid crisis. A separate investigation was conducted by Jerry McNeely of the Office of the Independent Police Review Director, which yielded another report that generated similar findings as Sinclair's, that racism, both overt and systemic, exists within the Thunder Bay Police Service at an institutional level and the Indigenous population of Thunder Bay experiences racism on a regular basis. Hare also said that they support Director Jerry McNeely and his 44 recommendations and want to ensure that those recommendations are implemented promptly with a collaborative approach. The Ontario government is expected to pass legislation today that would prevent a strike or lockout at a utility that provides roughly half of the province's power. The government called legislators back from the holiday break on Monday in an effort to end the dispute between the Power Workers Union and Ontario Power Generation, saying that the move was necessary to stave off outages. The progressive conservatives say their bill, if passed, will send the matter to arbitration so it can be resolved without jeopardizing the province's electricity supply. The opposition has accused the Tories of fear-mongering and immediately turning to back-to-work legislation when there were less drastic options available. The union, meanwhile, has said it is disappointed with the government's decision, which it says undermines bargaining efforts. The labor group, which represents about 6,000 OPG employees and another 10,000 energy sector staff, has been without a collective bargaining agreement since March 31st. It said the utility's final offer was rejected by a nearly 60% vote of its membership, with the key sticking point deemed to be OPG's refusal to grant over 300 term workers, the same rights as full-time employees at the Darlington and Pickering nuclear plants. The union issued a strike notice last Friday, prompting the government to announce the emergency session, although government sources had already said that was a possibility. Workers would not walk off the job until three weeks after the notice was issued. However, due to rules surrounding the shutdown of nuclear equipment, the province has said, it is outages that could begin as early as this Friday as some equipment powers down. Justin Trudeau says politicizing the issue of three Canadians detained in China might prove counterproductive. Yesterday, the Prime Minister said the most recent detention doesn't appear to fit the pattern of the previous two. Um, one of the things uh, that I've learned over these past three years of being engaged uh, in uh, consular cases and uh, showing a, a, a modest amount of success in uh, securing the return of Canadians in difficulty around the world uh, is that every case uh, is different. It requires uh, a complex approach that is a combination of uh, multiple different elements. Uh, when I was um, in opposition, uh, as a, a leader of the opposition, um, I remember you know, standing in the House and challenging Mr. Harper to pick up the phone and uh, get this Canadian released. Uh, 
I now understand that it's always a lot more complicated than that. Police say they've tracked down a tiny home that was stolen in St. Louis. The Jefferson County Sheriff Dave Marshak said detectives found the home yesterday about 30 miles from St. Louis. An anonymous tip led police to the 12-foot tall house. It's a dream come true for owner Megan Panu. Marshak says a towing company will take the house to her free of charge. The local newspaper reports Panu spent two years and nearly $20,000 renovating the home and hoped to move in this spring. She discovered it missing on Saturday. Wow, 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 wow. And that everything's right where I left it, a mess. 